Welcome, everyone, and welcome to the Choices Markets YouTube channel. I'm Darcy Furness, the nutritionist here in the South Surrey location. And if you're in my store area and you would like to take advantage of free nutrition services, you can email me directly at South Surrey Nutrition at choicesmarkets.com. I'll put this in the chat function as well for you. And also tonight, um, I want to let you know that we have online shopping available. You can check into that through our website at www.choicesmarkets.com. In that same website, you can sign up to receive our newsletters in your inbox, and that will keep you abreast of all our sales and what have you. And you can also follow us on Facebook and Instagram. So we encourage you to do that. A couple of housekeeping details tonight. Um, around 8.30, we're going to send you a survey email so we can mail you this little baby, which is a $10 off coupon, $10 off a $50 mm -hmm. purchase. And we're going to ask for your mailing address. And um, in a few weeks, you'll receive a cop uh, an actual nut buck there. So tonight, if you have questions, you can put them on the chat function in YouTube. And to use that, you'll need to have signed into your own YouTube account. No worries if you don't have your own account. Um, you can always reach out to Dr. Rory Gibbons directly. And I'm going to be putting his website um, and his email address and his Instagram location as well in the chat. So you don't have to memorize all these as I say them tonight. So let's um, let's get talking about Dr. Gibbon. So he is a naturopathic doctor who practices in the Lower Mainland and he specializes in male health. His clinical practice focuses on providing solutions for those struggling with fatigue, low mood, burnout, weight gain, and common skin and digestive issues, which pretty much covers most of us, doesn't it? He <laughs> yeah. balances his clinical practice uh, with his other full-time job, which is dad to two little boys. So tonight, Dr. Rory is going to dive into the relationship between our everyday stresses and our mood. He'll be giving us some easy, effective tips that we can implement immediately, as well as talking about some of his favorite products um, that can really help us. So I'm going to be muting myself and passing things over to Dr. Rory. And at the end, I'll come back in and help facilitate any questions. So please uh, enjoy and over to you, Dr. Rory. Excellent. Thank you so much, Darcy. Um, it's so exciting to hear that you have online online ordering. That's wonderful. It's a great addition to the choices repertoire. Um, yeah. So just like what Darcy was saying, you know, let's, if you have questions, um, pop them in the chat box, we'll talk about them. And then if we, if we don't have any, um, if you can't, if we don't answer them, you can always get in touch with me. So thank you so much for being here. Um, and, you know, I'm really excited to, to be able to talk to you guys through Choices Markets, like, just to do a talk, even though it's virtual, it's in BC, and it just it's really wonderful to, to speak on my hometown soil. So yes, I do run a I do run a virtual practice uh, out of my home in Fort Langley, and uh, yeah, just like what Darcy said, I see mainly mainly men's wellness, uh, but we have a pretty big focus in digestion and fatigue and uh, weight management. So let's talk about some stuff tonight. I'm excited. Uh, First thing right off the bat here, <clears throat> this is going to be given away to one lucky winner tonight and uh, can prep or choices will be getting in touch with that person via email. So that's awesome. It's a wonderful little prize pack. And then I also want, wanted to add that all can prep items at choices markets are 20% off this month. So that's pretty awesome because these are wonderful products um, come from a really great company, great Canadian company with incredible ingredients that we're going to learn about tonight. Oh, here's me again. Yeah, pretty much covered all those things. Um, this uh, just number th the third bullet down. I just wanted to highlight this one. I do really like functional nutrition. And the reason why is that it, it makes sense to me where we use nutrients and that affects the biochemistry in the body. And that works. <laughs> it's wonderful. Like, it's so good. And there's lots of uh, research around what we use to help people. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, I'm also a speaker, author, husband, father, cyclist, and it, I, I do like, I really like Star Wars, and I got to tell you, this latest series, Star Wars series called Andor is really doing it for me. It's really cool. So if you haven't checked it out, I encourage you to check it out, but I digress. <laughs> Let's move on. Um, I personally like to recognize that I'm presenting to you today from my home, 
on the unceded territory of the Coast Salish peoples. Um, and uh, wherever you are in BC, I want you to I'd encourage you to learn about where you live and what um, the history of your, your land that you live on. <clears throat> so we're talking about stress tonight. It's a hot topic, not just this year. It says a hot topic this year, but honestly, it's been a hot topic for the last like three years because we have been faced with a lot of different moving um, stresses in in the world, not just Canada, but in the world. So let's just break down a couple of things here. So stress is is stress is how the brain and body respond to any demand. Okay, so any type of challenge, such as performance at work or school. Uh, a significant life change or a traumatic event, those can be stressful. Okay. They put it, stress puts us in a state of fight or flight. And there's a couple other different words that are fight and flight, one being sympathetic. Okay. A sympathetic is a, a nervous system response. I'll just call it fight or flight throughout this present, presentation because it's kind of the, the most, um, uh, 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 most familiar term for, for a lot of people. We can break, break down stress even more into good stress and bad stress. So eustress is right here. Eustress is a positive, motivating, and a function enhancing stress. Okay, it's usually actually not considered a stress, but it's sometimes labeled as like incentive or motivation. <laughs> okay, so for instance, exercise could also be considered a eustress unless you see it as a punishment. Okay, think about that for a second. So usually in a use stress situation, the energy provided is proportionate to what is needed in this situation, while in the opposite distress, the energy is excessive or unusable. Okay. On that note, distress is, these are the stresses that tend to stress people out. <clears throat> anyone, anyone like count the number of times I say stress in this presentation, it's wild. So distress tends to cause people to feel overwhelmed, anxious and to experience physical and psychological symptoms like headaches and tension, insomnia, and inattentiveness or irritability. Um, so I'm sure a lot of people have thought, have felt these before. It may not attribute them to stress causing them, but when we undergo stress, it comes out in our bodies in different ways. <clears throat> macro, macro stresses and micro stresses. So macro stress is like they're the big things in your life, like a toxic work environment or a toxic relationship. Um, micro stresses are those like little things throughout the day. Okay. So like a stressful drive to work or someone not showing up right on time and that happening over and over again, or coming home to a messy house, which you don't really like, but those are small little stresses that eat up, eat, eat at you all day long. <clears throat> and then it can come back in the form of mood disorders or mood concerns. So here's a stat that is, I find kind of scary. So from fall 2020 to spring 2021, it's about six months, six to eight months, adults aged 25 to 64, which is a pretty big range, they screen positive for at least one disorder like anxiety or depression. And that stat increased by 27%. Okay. <clears throat> That's a pretty big increase. It's a relative risk, but it's also, it's going up. And that was in 2020 and 2021. Since then, there have been added stresses to our lives, like in the form of, um, in the form of like world conflict, country conflict, inter-country conflict. Um, <laughs> it's, it's wild. Like we all know what we're talking about here. So I wouldn't be surprised if this keeps going up because humans aren't doing very well with dealing with these stresses. <clears throat> so let's talk about like what is involved with stress and like what is causing, what, what are the hormones that are responsible for the responses to stress? Okay, so without going into too much detail here, like when we experience a stress, the fight, we get a fight or flight hormones are put into action to deal with it. Okay, so this is eustress or distress. So specifically cortisol and epinephrine are the ones that um, are there that are turned on when we deal with some sort of stress that fires up, <clears throat> fires us up. And for those people who are thinking like, well, what's adrenaline then? Like, what's adrenaline? I've heard adrenaline. Epinephrine is adrenaline. Norepinephrine is noradrenaline, okay? So we can't label hormones as good and bad. 
Okay, they, they just do things. So that being said, cortisol is often referred to as bad. Okay, it's only because we make it that way. We don't do a good enough job at regulating our stress, allowing our body to rest and repair. And then we blame cortisol and then call, call it names, right? It's literally just trying to do what we want it to do. We just are secreting it more than we need to. So I also want to bring up the HPA axis, okay? <clears throat> We're going to go over this in a moment, but the, the HPA axis is the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis. So basically your brain to your adrenal glands. So this is the hormonal pathway that activates cortisol release from the adrenal glands. It's actually not a part of the nervous system. So I just wanted to bring this up because we'll be talking about some nutrients and herbs that support the adrenal system and the nervous system. So there's two pathways here, adrenal system and the nervous system. So cat catabolism versus anabolism. So cortisol gets a bad reputation because it's ability to break down tissue. So when, when it's secreted chronically, it can actually degenerate certain tissues. When it's secreted acutely, it does a wonderful job of controlling inflammation. <laughs> okay. So you've maybe heard of a, a cortisol shot or cortisone shot. And so that is an acute bout of cortisol into a local area, which is increasing or improving inflammation. The opposite anabolism means building up. And this happens when we are in a rest and repair phase of nervous activity. And that is a phase that we don't spend enough time in. It doesn't have to be just sleeping. It can be during the day when we're in a, a state of, uh, of rest and repair. <clears throat> so short-term, long-term stress Humans are like beautifully designed to handle short bouts of stress, but we really struggle to manage chronic and repetitive stresses. Okay, let me say that one more time. We are beautifully designed to handle short bouts of stress, but we struggle to manage chronic and repetitive stress. Okay, so there are people in your life that will say, oh, I, I've, I dealt with stress all my life and I'm fine. Okay, well, I would argue that they are not fine <clears throat> and there's something else going on with them that could be improved if they weren't so bloody stressed for so long. <laughs> so in, a, in short acute situations, our body handles the stressor with a release of cortisol and epinephrine. And when it's over, those hormones come down. <clears throat> this isn't what we experience now though. So we experience negative stressors constantly and chronically and cortisol is secreted at moderate to high amounts for longer than what we are designed for. Okay. So not at high levels where they're maxed out, but there's just like an elevated overall level. So the brain then recognizes the higher than normal levels of cortisol hanging around. And then it releases a mother hormones from the brain and sorry. And then the release of the mother hormones from the brain, they are dampened. Okay. I'm not going to go too far into it, but basically the brain is sensing higher levels of cortisol and it's down-regulating the, the signals to the adrenal system and to the thyroid system for that matter. So this does not mean like at a level of Addison's disease, which is a, is a serious autoimmune disease where you need medical attention. Absolutely. Sometimes emergency medical attention. So this might clear some things up. <clears throat> Remember when I said there's a nervous system that we need to talk about and then the hormonal system, this is it right here. So a stressor, lights up two areas of your body, the nervous system and the hormonal system. <clears throat> Basically stress makes everything worse. <laughs> we don't have to like really expand on that, but these are some, um, these are some words that come to mind on the daily with my patients. When I'm seeing them, I say like, how are you feeling today? How's your mood? How's your feelings of nervousness? How's your feelings of sadness? And these words get peppered in every single day. And it's a way for me to judge. Uh, I shouldn't say judge. It's not good to assess their uh, progress. <clears throat> I'm sure lots of people are, say, are reading these and being like, yeah, yeah. Yesterday, today felt those. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So let's connect the dots. Like how does stress affect our mood and symptoms? Okay. So here's your distress in the more in the middle, chronic, 
stress. Distress, again, is that negative stress, right? And let's see. D distress puts a stress on our digestive system, giving us dis digestive um, uh, alterations such as constipation, diarrhea, cramps, and then that will change our microbiome, which is the bacteria and the, the flora in our digestive system. And that has been really linked to mood disorders. I see this very often. If you think of someone with anxiety, what I see often is diarrhea. Someone with depression, very often I see constipation. And so if we can work on digestion, get things moving or get things slowing down, then mood usually improves. Distress affects hormone changes. For instance, it needs more cortisol, which takes away from the production of things like progesterone and testosterone, which leads to things like anxiety and depression. What about over here? Stress needs nutrients in order to... Um, sorry, cortisol production and epinephrine production need nutrients in order to function and do their job. But that takes away the nutrients we need in order to go to sleep and to be happy <laughs> or pleasant. <clears throat> Over here, distress, it doesn't like we're thinking about it, right? So our sleep is disturbed. Pair this with this, that sucks. And then our mood changes because we're sleepy. And then we get, you know, we get other mood dampening things in our life. Exercise intolerance is another thing when we're stressed out, can't do, we just can't do everything. So that makes us tired, which makes us feel low symptoms of sadness. So this is a really interesting one because often people will be, I shouldn't say often, sometimes people are, are diagnosed with depression, but they are just chronically stressed and tired. So they're put on an SSRI and maybe it helps, maybe it doesn't. <clears throat> so. I'm going to talk about a lot of products tonight, but I also want to talk about some lifestyle and dietary things that you can do. And honestly, if you do these things, you will be so good. Just like feel so much better, but the trick is doing them. And this is why I've added in a coaching option for my patients is to help them stay accountable and make these small changes. <clears throat> so nature time, let's talk about that. Plenty of scientific evidence to support the ancient art of Shinrin Yoku. It's a thing. There's a lot of data out there that suggests that spending time amongst trees, grass, shrubbery, streams has shown to improve blood pressure, cortisol, anxiety, feelings of sadness, all documented. Breathing activities. <sighs> When we take part in a breathing techniques, we activate something called the vagus nerve, which automatically starts pulling us out of that fight or flight state and into the rest and digest state. It's amazing that we can control our blood, uh, sorry, our heart rate by breathing. That's pretty wild. And everyone's thinking it now, take heart rate. <clears throat> pretty amazing. Physical activity. So notice I didn't say go work out here. So working out at a gym or home can be great, but also can be daunting to, to many, if, especially if you feel like you don't like your physical level, physical activity is low at the moment. And you don't really, you're not familiar with the gym that can be really daunting. So let's just go for a walk, go for a 10 minute walk. Okay. I, when I say go for a walk, it doesn't mean you have to go for a 60 to 80 minute walk, like go for a 10 minute walk after lunch. It will do your body very good. <clears throat> strength training. I love strength training. It, everyone should be doing it, especially people that are middle age. It improves your wellness outcomes uh, in basically every aspect of your life. So if you want to take that up, I highly recommend getting a good personal trainer in your area to help you start that journey. I might know one in your area, so feel free to, to reach out and ask me who do I recommend. Digital data intake. So this one is a really big one. But, um, you've probably heard the terms misinformation before and social media is a real, really strong presence for spreading information. Okay. So whether it's misinformation or information or, or whatever in between, or how you, how someone views the information, this is, can be very, very negative to your mood. Okay. Very easy to get caught up in this social media news friendly, especially now in the last three and a half years. 
three and a half, three years ish. I've certainly been suggesting to my patients and friends and family to try to unfollow people on social media when they feel triggered in a negative way. So in some cases, delete the apps off their phone, just delete them right away. <clears throat> Don't get me wrong. It's important to pay attention to certain updates in your area, but just try to limit the destructive noise. That's very helpful. Less screen time. Yeah, there's definitely information and data to, to say that less screen time is correlated with a, a, a higher, um, more positive, um, more positive mood overall. Also sleep, it really improves sleep when you decrease the screen time. And here everyone's watching me on a screen, I'm sorry. <laughs> but after this webinar is done, let's turn the screens off and let's read a book at dim light and talk to your partner um, <clears throat> instead. So screen time, like I'm not just talking about scrolling on social media here, I'm talking about watching TV as well. So this is an escape for some people, but it's not helping overall. Okay, it's taking away time in bed and rest and probably taking away people, taking away time with people. Um, blue light from the screen also alters cortisol and melatonin release. Okay, so melatonin release goes down when we see light from a screen. And melatonin is our sleep drive hormone. Journaling doesn't have to be a stereotypical Instagram image, okay, of sitting down with a coffee and a plant, diffusing out essential oils, but no kids around. It's not always reasonable. So that would be lovely, uh, but let's be reasonable with that task. So it can be done in three minutes if time is an issue. Three things you're grateful for that day. One thing you're excited for that day. It's just a way of getting you to think and, and reflect inwards. It's a way of um, showing gratitude. <clears throat> intentional thinking. So meditation, like I say intentional thinking because meditation, some people get a funny vibe from that word. So the simple act of thinking about a breath in versus a breath out automatically activates the vagus nerve. And as we learned earlier, this is the pathway to the rest and digest nervous state. <clears throat> That's a type of meditation is thinking about your breath, focusing on your breath in and out. Talk to a friend, <clears throat> reach out to someone who's open-minded and has proven to be a good listener in the past. Okay. So chances are they could probably benefit from some honest chats as well. So if you're struggling to think of someone, they're always our counselors that are at your disposal, trained listeners, and can help you through get, get through some difficult times and emotions. And the wonderful thing about counselors is that they're usually uh, a portion of their cost is covered by extended benefits. <clears throat> Excuse me. I can't tell you the impact my counselor has had on me in the last three, last four years. Um, it's been really, really life-changing. <clears throat> so I recommend everyone to go see one just Get, just drop the stigma around it and do it. You don't have to tell anyone you're doing it. Uh, it's worth it. And lastly, do something that brings you joy. It sounds so corny, I know, but it's just so true. Like this doesn't mean do something that the internet says should bring you joy, like um, whatever, <laughs> that means something different to everybody. It's usually something that you did as a kid or a young adult, okay? So for instance, myself today, um, I, after I was done working with patients, I went and rode my bike into the town to meet my wife and my kids at the park. And I haven't ridden my bike by myself for, for a while. Yeah, Cause I usually go with my kids and it was just the best thing. <laughs> it was just the best thing. So we talked about some lifestyle stuff. But let's talk about some dietary things that you can start doing, uh, right away. So sugar, this is like refined sugar that I'm talking about here. Um, <clears throat> So for a lot of us, we crave sugar when things get tough and it enters into our diet with a vengeance. Fast and furious. When we inject sugar into our diet in large amounts, we alter our ability to deal with it because it hit, goes into our body and it hits certain receptors and our certain receptors in our brain start getting used to that fix. Okay, so three things come to mind here. One, we get a blood sugar crash, which can come out in the form of lightheadedness, irritability, and anger. Okay, this is when we ingest sugar. Two, second situation, we get an energy crash and that looks like lack of energy and motivation, which then leads to less exercise, 
less outside time, et cetera, et cetera. It's a vicious cycle. And lastly, three, people can sometimes feel jittery, anxious, and nervous after a bunch of sugar or even a bunch of sushi, for instance, like that, that processed rice, not processed rice, the sticky rice. That is just like metabolized to sugar so fast. <clears throat> So when someone feels jittery and anxious, like this usually happens with, with, with the person who is dealing with some sort of anxiety to begin with diagnosed or undiagnosed, um, some sugar solutions. So start decreasing the existing sugar in your diet. So added sugar in your coffee, um, you'll know, put one sugar cube in instead of two and eventually go to a half sugar cube or, or a little tiny drop of stevia, ideally coffee black. <clears throat> The hidden cookies in your cupboard or the bag and your candy in your car or office, like those can be helped by not buying them and then replacing with something that is like that. So if you need something snacky, like trail mix is a good idea. <clears throat> but if you really want a candy fix, I'm a big fan of smart sweets. I have no affiliation. Uh, they just have 92% less sugar. There's about three grams of sugar in a 50 gram bag. I like them. They're low, like really low sugar, but I still feel like I'm eating candies once in a while. Um, but there are tons of, tons of other products out there that have really low sugar or no sugar <clears throat> that can, that can uh, curb that craving caffeine. So pretty simply your caffeine, as we all know, is a stimulant. So if you're someone who is more on the anxious side, this may push you a little further into the anxious feelings. Um, so caffeine solutions here, if you're one of those people start having half decaf or decaf in the afternoon, if you're a coffee drinker, okay. Or replace one of your coffees with green tea and then herbal teas <clears throat> after that. So you kind of weed down the caffeine. <clears throat> Comfort food, man, I love comfort food. First thing that comes to mind is burger and fries. I'll be <laughs> guilty. The thing with comfort food is that usually they are a carbohydrate dominant meal. Okay, so other ones that come to mind, macaroni and cheese, okay, pasta with heavy cream sauce, cake, cinnamon buns. So you get the picture here. I'm not saying like don't have these things, but think about how you feel afterwards, okay? So most likely you are feel, going to feel lethargic, heavy, full, bloated, I don't think anyone has that meal and reports feelings of elation and energy or uplifting mood and motivation. Like I don't go and eat a burger and fries and feel light. And like, I want to go do a 60 kilometer bike ride. Like that's not how I feel. Um, hydration. <clears throat> this one ties into energy quite tightly. So water major role in many chemical reactions in our body, especially in our energy producing pathways, being hydrated moves digestion along helps blood flush out metabolites from organs, lymphatics, and muscles. Just there isn't enough time in the day to talk about how important drinking water is. <clears throat> so let's talk about some products here. Some really cool ingredients. I'm just gonna take a sip of my uh, Camperev magnesium. It's delicious. So here are the products that we're gonna go over today. <clears throat> Adrenal Chill Pro, Magnesium, Magnesium Sleep, Synergy B, Vitamin D, and a cool product called Healthy Mood. <clears throat> and so whenever I'm tasked uh, with talking to an audience about a topic, oh, I'm sorry, I went a, a, a little bit fast there. This is important. So whenever I'm tasked with talking to an audience about a topic, I usually look at the situation the way I look at a patient. So every situation is unique, and there's usually never one thing that is causing the concern. Okay, so we're, we're holistic beings, right? We're a lot of things are affecting us at once. <clears throat> More often than not, the situation needs a holistic approach in order to see long-term improvement, okay? So this is what I appreciate about these products. The combination of ingredients are used to target specific pathways to achieve progress. <clears throat> okay, let's start with Adrenal Chill. I really like this one. Um, it, says, it says women on the bottle. Uh, I'm not sure if it still says women, whatever. If it does, it does this is still good for men. Like I use this with my male patients very often. <clears throat> adrenal chill and adrenal pro both contain herbs that are considered adaptogens. So they're helping the hormonal pathway of stress. Okay. So like the, the HPA axis. So this may be a new word to many of you, but I'll explain an adaptogen is something that provides a normalizing effect <clears throat> to your body. 
So if you're a little bit stressed, it brings it down. If you're a little bit low, it brings it up. Adrenal chill, <clears throat> this one right here in front of us, is made up of two ingredients. It's super simple, ashwagandha and L-theanine. Okay, so let's talk about ashwagandha first. Ashwagandha, an excellent, excellent example of an adaptogen. So it normalizes daily cortisol release. So high in the morning, low in the evening. We suspect that a constituent of the plant itself is mimicking uh, the body's own stress-reducing relaxation hormone, GABA, which reduces cortisol. Okay, and that's what we think is going on here. <clears throat> Excuse me. So the ashwagandha is actually a special plant called the KSM 66 ashwagandha. It's a very well-researched <clears throat> type of ashwagandha and has shown to really benefit people who have symptoms of higher than normal daily cortisol. So it's grown and harvested in India by what is called, called a farm to table integration. So the farm owns the, uh, the plant and the production of it. So the, this patented ashwagandha took about 14 years to develop and refine. And in that 14 years, there's been some promising research conducted on it. Here are some of the results from that research. In one study, there was a 22% drop in serum cortisol after only eight weeks. Another study says that it helps preserve vitamin C in the adrenal glands, which is really helpful because we need vitamin C to produce all of those stress hormones. It reduces subjective measures of stress by about 33%. That sounds good. And one study showed an 88% reduction in anxiety symptoms versus 50% in a placebo. That's a, it's wild. Like, I think that was over eight weeks as well. So also sleep, ashwagandha has been shown to improve in sleep quality over eight weeks. And we know that sleep has been proven to reduce anxiety and stress. So we need that rest. <clears throat> L-theanine is an amino acid that's used to induce calm and mental clarity without making you feel sleepy. So this is one of my go-tos in university where I was stressed out and I needed to um, take something to calm down, but not feel sleepy. So by itself, this is a great nutrient for calming the brain down and providing some thought clarity before activities that require mental work. So presentations and exams. So you can expect this nutrient to show its effect within about 45 to 60 minutes after taking it. So what does it do? It gets absorbed into the bloodstream, crosses the blood brain barrier, puts our brain into a more alpha wave state. So the alpha waves are associated with a calm nervous system, uh, one that is more rest and digest dominant versus fight or flight. Okay, so you could consider the action of L-theanine as a restful wakefulness. Maybe to give you an example would be the state someone would be in during a meditation session. So you're you are calm, your mind is calm, but you aren't falling asleep. L-theanine can also be taken on its own but I often see people needing an adrenal support and L-theanine at the same time. Mm -hmm. So I think that's really helpful. Common question when dealing with adrenal support products, can I take this before bed? And yes, you can take adrenal chill before bedtime. <clears throat> right here on the bottom says formulated to help the tired and wired. So remember we talked about like normal cortisol rhythm Tired and wired person would have higher than normal levels of cortisol at nighttime. So they're thinking, 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 mm -hmm. super tired and burnt out, but they're just wired thinking about stuff. Let's talk about Adrenal Pro. So this is one of the first adrenal products that I tried as a young naturopathic student. It's a great combo of eight different ingredients that address both the HPA axis and the central nervous system. So both sides of that diagram we talked about in the beginning. So when we take this combo, we expect to experience increased energy, reduction in sleep, uh, sorry, definitely not a reduction in sleep, reduction in stress and fatigue and improved sleep and just an overall sense of well being. <clears throat> I love this, this type of product because it hits stress pathways from like many different angles, but also has a decent level of every ingredient in it. So L-tyrosine, uh, sometimes referred to as a stress amino acid it because dopamine and epinephrine need this amino acid in order to be created. So kind of an important one there. Vitamin B5, it's just literally found everywhere in the body. So because it's so well uh, needed, so highly needed, and especially found in our energy producing pathways. <clears throat> the, there's KSM 
66 ashwagandha in there, just as we talked about a moment ago, it mimics the nervous system inhibitory hormone GABA, which it controls out cortisol. There's this thing called Siberian ginseng. It acts to reduce fatigue and improve endurance and combat stress. Really cool fact about the Siberian ginseng. Back in the 70s, this herb was heavily utilized by Olympic athletes, uh, especially or specifically the Russian athletes because of its physical effect. And, and then later it made its way into the Russian cosmonaut program because of its effect on focus and mental clarity, which I thought was really cool. Let's talk about Shizandra. Great name, very cool herb. Uh, it's a harmonizing tonic. When you eat this berry, the Shizandra berry, you, you taste five different flavors. It's really wild. <clears throat> At the end of the day, this little berry gives us the feeling of energy. Rhodiola, really cool because it actually is the fastest acting adaptogen and we can see improvements in burnout and fatigue often within a week. This is one that I had uh, during, um, during school. I took this because it helped my focus a ton. <clears throat> there are studies that uh, include this rhodiola with the um, focus and productivity of ER doctors and military cadets. And then astragalus and vitamin B6. Astragalus is sweet because it is a deep immune herb. So it stimulates white blood cell production at the level of the bone marrow. And then like when we're stressed out, our immune system come, calms down, comes down and doesn't um, allow us to deal with the infections very well. Vitamin B6 fits more in the central nervous system rather than the HPA axis. Specifically, it helps to make epinephrine and norepinephrine. So as you see this product, it's like supporting the adrenal's ability to make stress and supporting our body's ability to get through a stressful situation. Dose one cap twice a day. I uh, haven't had an issue with people not sleeping, but just to be safe, I recommend taking this one in the morning, one in the early afternoon. <clears throat> Synergy B, I'm not going to go through all of the ingredients here, but they're basically all the Bs, B vitamins and L-theanine, and which is really wonderful because when someone is chronically stressed, we crunch through B vitamins. And so we need to replace them. And sometimes we just don't get them from food as much as we hope, unfortunately. <clears throat> and so uh, L-theanine is great. I love having this in, in this B complex just because it gives the body a... Uh, kind of puts it into an alpha wave state, a little calmer wave. <clears throat> the vitamins are water soluble, so they need to be replaced daily. Okay. Um, and we, we are replacing them daily through our diet. However, if we are going through a state of chronic stress, then we need to kind of up that level of B vitamins in order to deal with them. <clears throat> Yeah, to add also B vitamins all play different roles. For instance, B3 has a big role in concentration and mood among others. And B7 has a large role in fat metabolism and skin and hair health. And B12, 9, and 6 have a role in blood cell production and cardiovascular health. So it's not just the stress pathways, but man, they act everywhere. All right, let's talk about magnesium. On that note, I'll take another sip here. I love speaking about magnesium because it's one of those minerals that's cheap, effective, and hits a lot of angles for patients. And people generally see a difference, usually quite quickly. So to add, it's a very safe mineral to use with patients. And so we know that it has over 800 different roles in the body. There's some say, places that stay like, oh, it's 300 things that it does in the body or 700, but my research, my, my research say 800. That's pretty astounding. So not all magnesium supplements are created equal, however, and there's plenty of research to show that they all do different things. <clears throat> so we can see this graph here. There are a bunch of different magnesiums out there and here are some listed, <clears throat> okay? So the magnesium bisglycinate right over here is what we use at Canprev in the Canprev um, magnesiums. <clears throat> And this bar is saying total magnesium transported. This means transported across the uh, lumen of the gut. <clears throat> so 
So down here, if we look at this magnesium oxide, people might be like, hey, I recognize that name. That is from milk of magnesia, and that is like a laxative type of magnesium. So this is one end where not a lot of stuff is being um, absorbed, and then the other side is is the magnesium bisglycinate, which is a lot of the magnesium business glycinate getting through the lumen or the, the lining of the gut. So it's highly needed in our body. Here are some roles that it needs that we need it for. Um, the highest concentrations of magnesium are in our bones, hearts, muscles, and nervous systems. And it works to keep our heart rate rhythm steady. It promotes a proper relaxation of our muscles, helps metabolize blood sugar, ensures nerve fibers fire well, and can even help mitigate pain, promotes regulation of blood pressure, activates vitamin D. I could go on and on and on and on and on about magnesium, but we are going to move on because all I can say is that everyone needs to be taking magnesium some way, shape or form. So every single one of these symptoms can come from chronic stress. And I've seen it both in myself, but in most of my patients. So when I give them magnesium bisglycinate, they almost always have a reduction in at least one of these symptoms. And I think I'm speaking conservatively when I say that the ones that my go-tos though, people having trouble going to sleep, inability to sleep, having either going to sleep or having sleep interruptions, magnesium. Let's start with that. <clears throat> So this magnesium product, the bisglycinate 200, it delivers 200 milligrams of elemental magnesium. So there are two other straight magnesium products from CanPrev that have less elemental magnesium, uh, the 140 milligram dose and 80 milligram dose. So those ones are more specific to certain uh, situations in the person. For instance, they're a little bit gentler on the gut and so more well tolerated for people like uh, people with IBS or stomach acid issues or autoimmune disorders like chronic, like Crohn's and colitis. Great thing about magnesium is that it will go to where it's needed and you can't overdose on it unless you, if, uh, on it, if you take it orally through the mouth, the body has a checkpoint <clears throat> where it stops absorbing magnesium and just gets excreted through the bowels in the way of, of looser stools. Probably my favorite mineral of all time. And I take it every day, usually at nighttime. You can see me drinking it now. So for those people that are having some more complicated sleep issues, kind of longstanding where they have, uh, where they have a night shift or something like that, <clears throat> there is the magnesium GABA and melatonin. So two people come to mind here, people who can't fall asleep, it usually takes them about two hours longer than most people, uh, or two people for one reason or another, not following a usual circadian rhythm. So shift work or jet lag. It's a go-to for my night shift people. So I mentioned briefly a moment ago that magnesium can help with sleep. It actually plays a role in supporting deep restorative sleep by maintaining healthy levels of GABA, which promotes sleep, okay? <clears throat> so melatonin in this product is the fast acting ingredient that will put your mind and body to sleep. So that's the sleep driver. So it doesn't always keep you asleep though. However, GABA and magnesium is there to help you keep you asleep. <clears throat> so GABA, it's an inhibitory neurotransmitter. Um, in other words, it's a molecule in the central nervous system that acts in a calming nature. Low GABA activity actually linked to insomnia and disruptive sleep. So that's why we're using that. You can get more information from magnesium.ca. It's a wonderful world. And, um, check the website out, download the magnesium primer. Let's talk about vitamin D for for a second here. I have a couple more products to talk about, but vitamin D is one of these things that's just super common and it's just, it's really underrated, okay? So it's an important fat soluble vitamin. It's needed in so many systems, uh, one being the, the, the stress system. So specifically right now in our lives, I see vitamin D helping in two ways, supporting our immune system and supporting our mood. So basically everyone can be, can benefit from taking daily and vit daily vitamin D, especially if you live in Canada. So get it tested if you're not sure. And of course, cons consult your doctor if you feel like you need more than on the bottle. So the test you want to get is 25 hydroxy vitamin D. So the, uh, in, in BC can't speak for the rest of Canada for in BC, it's about $65 to get it done through your medical doctor. And it might be a little bit more through your naturopathic doctor. 
<clears throat> so it's not covered by MSP, unfortunately, but it's, it's, in, I don't know. I think it's really useful to know. I've had lots of patients that are like, oh, I spend lots of time outside and they come back and they're vitamin D deficient. So <laughs> let's get that up. And they're like, I'm always sick. I'm always tired and mood slow. So let's check that out. Make sure it's at an adequate level. So can D3 made in a liquid? Okay. It's capsule form, and, sorry, liquid and capsule form and is 1000 IUs per drop or per cap. But I, I believe that there is a 2,500 IU form available now, a little more concentrated. <clears throat> D2 versus D3, get a D3. Okay. So D2 is synthesized in plants, mushrooms, and yeasts and used typically in vitamin D fortified foods and some supplements. Okay. The problem with it is that it's poorly absorbed and utilized. So you don't really get much of it. D3 is the form that is made by the body when sunshine hits the skin. So it's readily absorbed when taken internally and the body has to do very little in order to use it. It has to like, doesn't have to change it a whole lot. So to help in the absorption, Canprev has encapsulated the vitamin D3 in capsules of organic coconut oil, which is stable and enhances absorption of fat soluble vitamins. <clears throat> Vitamin D deficiency is a common denominator amongst people with depression. So clinically, I see this often as we enter the fall and winter months. So here we are in October, all of a sudden, people have a concern about seasonal affective disorder. So we have to remember here that depression is a multifaceted situation. And with vitamin D3, it isn't always a silver bullet. I wish it was, but it's not. So that being said, if it doesn't help a ton with your mood, then it is certainly helping in a different way my guess is that immune system is helping your immune system. D3 can come by itself, but it also is commonly purchased with vitamin K2. So K2 is a great addition because it helps with bone density and dental health. So basically it tends to, it takes the calcium in the blood and redirects it from depositing in the kidneys and arteries and sends it to the bones and teeth. <clears throat> Oh, okay. So saffron and healthy mood. This is really, really cool. It's a beautiful plant. Um, healthy mood is a jam packed little ca capsule. Basically everything in it I have talked about already besides saffron. Excuse me. What a cool and like beautiful ingredient this is like, look at the, look at the, um, the actual stigmas here, these red pieces, they're just like the color is incredible. <clears throat> so this is for people who have low mood and are, and, or feelings of nervousness, they can benefit from taking this. It aims to bring you back to neutral. Saffron is certainly the main ingredient here, but the other ingredients work to have a harmonizing effect on mood via a few different pathways. So let's talk about saffron for a moment. The saffron we use is top notch. It's grown in Iran and processed in France. And the part that is used is called the stigma. Like I mentioned earlier, the red part. In the world of saffron grading, the one that is used in this product is the highest grade called Sargol grade. And so you want a good grade of product to have. It's extremely rich in active metabolites. And we know that when it's used together, they are more effective than when used in isolation. <clears throat> this saffron is grown in Iran and has the richest stigmas compared to the other saffrons grown in the other areas of the world. Lots of long-term history of use of this herb dating back 3,000 3, years plus ago, uh, mainly as a food colorant, but also uh, used in Ayurvedic medicine to improve mood. <clears throat> and here we are learning about it and studying it. So for stress and anxiety, saffron works at dampening the effect of cortisol and mitigating the long-term effects of chronic stress via their potent antioxidant profile too. So for depression and mood, they have similar actions as some antidepressants in that it works to block reuptake of serotonin. So the serotonin can exist longer in the area of action and provide more mood effects before being removed. That sounds familiar as an SSRI. <clears throat> It works similar to that. Also maintains dopamine and helps promote GABA action in the brain. So we've talked about GABA already and dopamine. Da GABA is that calming neurotransmitter and the dopamine is a happy hormone. So we can see how it improves mood in a few different angles. <clears throat> Here's some other stuff that's in, in the healthy mood product. I'm not going to go through these things, but they are really wonderful. So 5-HTP, well, let's highlight that one. It's there to help create more serotonin as it's a direct precursor to the creation of serotonin itself. 
<clears throat> so GABA, main inhibitory neurotransmitter that produces a calming effect in the brain. We talk about that. And there's other vitamins and minerals there to be supportive of this, um, this herb. Just note on B12, it's essential for the biosynthesis and metabolism of serotonin amongst the many other things in the body. So there is, I did mention earlier, B12 is great for cardiovascular health and uh, blood cell production, but it's also important in metabolism of serotonin. So it's that B vitamins, man, they, they're everywhere. So one cap three times a day, capsule shouldn't make you drowsy. <clears throat> so that, I really like this one. I tried it myself and, and it, yeah, I think it really works well. And so before I just summarize, just wanted to add that the information I gave you today, it's not medical information. This is education. Okay. This is an education to take for you to take and learn and research and, and quiz your doctors on and, and ask about different options for your mood and for your health. So today we talked about stress path, stress pathways, states and hormones. Uh, we connected the dots between how stress changes mood <clears throat> and the effect that it has. Talked about lifestyle and dietary stuff that you can do. Please do those things. Do some, like one of those things. That's my challenge to you is to do, pick one and run with it. Um, <clears throat> I know it's coming into the uh, cooler months here, but I highly recommend if you're not doing a 10 minute walk a day, do a 10 minute walk a day, but actually time it and do it. And then we talked about all the great products that can profess to offer in regards to mood. <clears throat> so this is when I ask you like, what are you going to do for yourself after this webinar? So for me, what I'm going to do, I'm going to actually go do a, a, a 10 minute yoga flow uh, from my Peloton app. That's what I need to do tonight. I need to move. I've been sitting and kind of stagnant all day besides my bike ride. I need to go move my body. And I always feel better after that. So what are you going to do today or tonight? There's still time. It's, it's only 7.53. Oh my gosh, it's 7.53. <clears throat> all right. We're going to just, you can follow can prep here on Instagram and Facebook, but you can also find me on Instagram and Facebook. And here's my email address, I believe. Uh, Darcy put that in the show, not the show notes, but in the uh, chat notes. So Darcy, come on back. Here I am. There you are. <laughs> That's great, Dr. Gibbons. Thank Wonderful. you so much. That yeah, was really welcome. great. I feel more relaxed just, just hearing that there's oh. things we can do to be more relaxed. So yeah, I'm right. Sure we all kind of feel that. So I, I'll start us off with a question. We don't have any questions posted yet, but um, okay. I'm curious if I am sort of going through some anxiety and things like that, how do I know where to start? Like when I start with adrenal chill or adrenal pro, or would you just recommend talking to some um, of the <clears> wellness <throat> people at Choices? Or do you have like a, a an, an order, a hierarchy that you like? Yes. You know, I, I know I like magnesium and D because I know there's such common deficiencies. So from a nutrition yeah. point of view, but I'd love to hear your thoughts on that hierarchy. Yeah, for sure. So let's put all those things in context. So my hierarchy is this, we need to make sure the foundational dietary and lifestyle things are in check. Okay. So we put those and we, we start working on those. We don't have to have those all down before you start using things, but making sure we're active, like we're physically active, eating well, um, and we have a support network around us. If then going to products, if you're on the more anxious side, and magnesium is a great place to start. It's easy, it's cheap, it's effective, and you're not gonna get tired throughout the day when you take it. And it's gonna benefit you on a bunch of other levels too. So magnesium is a great place to start. The yeah. adrenal chill versus adrenal pro. So adrenal chill is something is a product that's going to bring you, bring your nervous system down a little bit. Okay. <clears throat> it's for those people that are tired and wired that need some calming nutrients in their life. And so if you're on that, on that spectrum where you're more feelings of nervousness, more anxious, try that one. If you are someone that has been going through um, a high level of stress and you're tired, then Use the Adrenal Pro because you have some more uh, energy giving herbs like the Eleuthero or so the Siberian ginseng. Um, I mean, oh, sorry, I, I didn't mention vitamin D. Vitamin D is a great one as well to take. Um, 
just take the instructions on the bottle. I believe it's, it's probably a thousand I use per day. That's a good place to start too. Um, Perfect. And I always, always recommend talking to someone that has more expertise on these things than you, the consumer does. Okay. Uh, we can get a lot of information from Google. However, the application of that information is not always sound on Google. Right. That's where you know, naturopathic doctors, nutritionists, dietitians, and, and medical doctors, that's where we really shine is application and strategy when it comes to your health. <clears throat> Perfect. Okay. I've got a couple of questions here now. One of them, okay. um, have any of your studies or research shown a reduction in high blood pressure that can arise with repetitive stress with any of your products? If so, which product? So reducing blood pressure that might be raised due to chronic <clears throat> stress. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I can't say for sure any ingredients specifically that we talked about tonight, reducing blood pressure. I'd have to just go back and uh, that'd be a great question for the CanPrev team because they have a team of researchers that, that develop the products. Um, however, that being said, if someone is chronically stressed and they have high blood pressure, taking, um, uh, taking like an adrenal support could be very helpful. My one caveat here is if you're going to go buy something off the shelf, please look out for licorice. Glyceriza is the Latin name for it. And that has been shown to Im like increase blood pressure. So if you're looking for a adrenal support that is, re you know, that you because you want to reduce your blood pressure, which I think you need something else. You need, you need a more, um, a, a more comprehensive workup. Um, just look out for, for licorice in your products. Okay. Yeah. And how long does, um, adrenal chill take to work and do you mm. take it for prevention or as needed? Adrenal chill is something that you take for adrenal and treatment, probably not, probably not as needed. So the L-theanine in adrenal chill can be used as needed, um, but I, if I'm going to do that with a patient, I'm going to dose that higher than what's in the capsule for L-theanine by itself. So ashwagandha is there to help restore the cortisol rhythm during the day. And that doesn't happen overnight, unfortunately. So you do have to take that for a while. And one of the studies that I think I cited that it takes about some, some results you see within eight weeks which really isn't that long. Like it's two months, eight, eight weeks is October, December 11th. You, you would feel you'd notice differences. And so mm -hmm. that's just taking the product alone, right? So if you take that product plus start implementing some mindfulness practices and some, you know, better sleep, sleep habits, you'll be seeing um, improvements in your mood and your well being, like pretty quick. Okay. And could I keep taking that indefinitely if I wanted to? Yes. Okay, good. Um, next question is, I'm currently taking magnesium um, bisglycinate every night, but I still feel anxious. What do you recommend? Probably that adrenal chill? Yeah, I mean, that would be a good start. Um, you know, I would, I would, I always ask the question, like, why are you feeling anxious? Like, what, what are you thinking about? What is keeping you up at night? Like those are some things that you may need to talk through um, with, with someone like a qualified professional. But I think the, the question is like, what can I take? And so, you know, going to something like melatonin and GABA, GABA is a wonderful inhibitory hormone. Okay. So it's there to calm the central nervous system. Um, and again, the melatonin is there to put your sleep drive up a bit. Okay. So usually when someone is tired and wired and they're thinking like jittery or anxious at nighttime, their cortisol is higher, right? You're, you don't feel relaxed. So you're probably in a fight or flight state. So that means your cortisol is a little bit higher and that tells melatonin to go away. And so we need to get rid of the cortisol and bring the melatonin back. And so sometimes we just need a little boost and we can use magnesium, GABA and melatonin to help that. 
I like the magnesium GABA melatonin one because it, I believe each capsule or maybe yeah, each capsule is two milligrams of melatonin, which is a, like a conservative dose. Sounds good. Yeah. Um, a comment from someone saying, I've tried Adrena Chill and noticed it working only 30 minutes. Most of my friends take it based on my experience. So nice. <laughs> there you go. So it can be a bit of a quick hitter maybe, which is great. Yeah, they're, um, feeling, the, they're feeling the L-theanine there. That's good. For sure. With, re with respect to the um, screen time at night, I'm wondering about yeah. if you have any comments on those blue light l glasses you yes. can get. And also you can certainly change your devices and get them up or down. I know the idea is to still mm -hmm. not be on it as you're you know, hitting the pillow, but yeah. can you comment on that for us? Yeah, this is a great topic that I need to do some more reading into because I, I believe there's more research out there that is now saying it's not just the blue light that's messing with your pineal gland and the melatonin. It's just all light, okay, which honestly, it kind of makes sense yeah. because if you think about, you know, if we were a paleolithic people, right? Like they don't have screens, they don't have artificial light, they have fire. And so right. we're like, as mammals and, or as animals, we should be going to sleep with the sun. And so, sorry, I had a little, a little off tangent there. My point is, is that research like five to 10 years ago, it was all blue light. It was like blue light dampens the pineal, pineal gland, which dampens the melatonin release <clears throat> and it screws up your sleep patterns. Um, I mean, the blue light blocking glasses will probably help a bit. Mm -hmm. um, the other part of the screen time thing is not, not just the light, it's what you're watching mm -hmm. too, right? Like if you're watching an engaging show um, that will can fire up your nervous system. It's not calming it down. And even if you're watching something funny, like something enjoyable, you're still awake and you're still engaging in it, which is keeping your cortisol higher. So, you know, I usually like last year, for instance, I was telling patients, I need you to stop being on screens 60 minutes before you go to bed, but I just find it's just not reasonable. So my suggestion now is I want you to plug your phone in outside of the bedroom. So that's kind of my suggestion and challenge to the listeners tonight is to plug your phone outside the bedroom overnight. Good. That's a good one. I know it's amazing how we are so, um, so wired and you think about mm -hmm. everything going down, you know, no, no internet, nothing. We'd all be like, whoa, <laughs> we have to go find a, find a book or do something. Can you imagine? <laughs> yeah, it's pretty interesting. Um, you got a couple of thank you very much for your time and sharing your Thanks, information. That's been great. And if anybody else has any questions, now's the time to type them in uh, before we wrap up. And uh, remember that the CanPrev products are on sale this month at Choices. And you've got um, Dr. Rory's contact information. And um, I think having an ND in our wellness toolbox is a really, yeah. really good idea because as we know, our acute medical system does a great job when terrible things happen. They're very quick. Um, emergency rooms are great, but when it comes to wellness and prevention and chronic conditions, um, NDs are wonderful. And Dr. Gibbons is uh, one of the lovely ones. So there you have it. Well, thank Anyways. You. Yeah. Thank you so much, everyone, for coming and uh, watch for future seminars. And um, you'll be receiving your email sometime tonight. So fill it out to get your nutrition coupon. And hopefully you'll be one of the, the, the lucky winner of the uh, prize pack. So thanks again. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. All right. All right. We'll say good night. Take care then.